Right, let's get started with this. Uh, first of all, I greet you, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. It's the 13th of August, and it's around 20 past 7 in the evening here in South Africa. This is a video I've been uh, meaning to get started on way earlier today, and I got myself all involved in a whole lot of stuff here on this um, calendar stuff, and and uh, the the metonic cycle and all sorts of things but before I get into it, well I'm not even going to get into any of that stuff what I'm going to talk about in this video is the seven year um, Shemitah cycle there's been a fair amount of debate recently in the last couple of days maybe the last week or so uh, since Alan suggested that we may have another year to go before the escape of the bride and the debate is whether we're in fact in the seventh year right now, the, the final year of the, the current Shemitah cycle, or whether it's only coming up next year, which would mean that we're in the sixth year um, right now. So with this, I decided to go and have a look at it again. And, um, and I've decided that once and for all, I'm going to, I need to nail this thing down. I need to prove beyond any doubt that we're in the seventh year and as I worked through it um, and I looked at a couple of things that I had spotted before and I never really got into the, the detail of it I ended up doing quite the opposite <laughs> so um, this may not be good news however there's a big but um, so there may in fact be the case that we're in the sixth year, um, but there's a there's a butt attached to it. Now I'll get to the butt right at the end. Okay. So what I'm going to look at first of all is how we've been putting our cycle chart together. Okay. This this chart is is very similar. Uh, it's, it was the it was the basis that of the chart that Alan is currently using. He's redone his, um, and it's the seventy account chart. Uh, my this one is a little bit different, and I just want to go into the structure, the layout, and and why I've I've put it in the way that the way that it is. Okay. The first thing that we need to consider when is well when we started putting this this metonic cycle, uh, the 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 Schmitter cycle together. The truth of the matter is we've been basically working on a hit and miss, a hit and miss situation. We pegged the where we believed the Jubilee to be based on where we believed the 14 years would start, the Jubilee year would be at the end of the 14 years. And we've been doing that now for the last couple of years and each year that passes by we've made an adjustment um, to the Shemitah cycle and the year in which we believe the Jubilee is going to be. And this year is no different. We're making yet another adjustment um, on the same principle. Now that hit and miss situation, I have for some time now felt is a little bit unsatisfactory. Just like we were able to prove beyond any doubt the exact year in which Jesus was born from the scriptures, I believe we are able to prove beyond any doubt exactly where we are in the Shemitah cycle using the scriptures straight out of the Bible not taking any historical evidence into consideration I mean those are those are all things that we can we can add on later on but the principle the foundation must be on the scripture and this is what's been bugging me for some time and I've been looking for it, and I believe I found it a little while ago and I didn't really pursue it much. I, I, I pursued it a little bit, but there were some issues. <laughs> Probably the one of the issues was it didn't quite line up to where I expected it to be. So I put it aside. But it's time now that we actually dealt with it. Okay. So when we're dealing with the Shemitah cycle, the thing that we need to remember is that it is six months out of sync or out of phase with the uh, biblical year. So a biblical year we know runs from spring to spring. Okay, so in our typically when we sh when we uh, label a biblical year, we've typically used the Gregorian years. Uh, for example, here we we got two th uh, 2023, 2024. 
because part of the biblical year is in the year 20, Gregorian year 2023, and the other remaining so part of the year is in the Gregorian year 2024. So we've got about nine months in the one year, and the remaining uh, three to four months are in the following year. So we normally depict it in this format. Okay. Now the Shemitah cycle, we know from the from the from the Bible, it runs from the tenth day of the seventh month. That is when the alarm, the the the, the Shemitah and the and the Jubilee uh, uh, cycles, the seven year cycles. Uh, for for the for the jubilee, run from the tenth of the seventh month through to the following year, uh, the seventh month. So that's about six months out of sync with the biblical year, and that makes things a little bit more complicated when we start looking at these meter cycles versus biblical years. And then to add injury, we've got a Gregorian uh, uh, year, which is also out of out of phase with with all these things. So. In, in the past, we've typically used one number here in this column to, to denote the Shemitah uh, cycle that, we, that we're in. The problem with that is that it's a little misleading because, in fact, we've got part of a uh, in this biblical year, 2023, for example, we've got part of the, uh, the Shemitah cycle in the 23, 2023 portion, and then it changes over to the next cycle in the autumn of 2023 so in uh, during the first bit of 2023 from january to uh to the autumn you know from the beginning of the year to autumn it's it's in the one in the cycle in this case it's okay let's just use we're going to debate this whether it's seven or six now <clears throat> but this is this is the old version this is this is i'm just going through the structure okay so just bear with me so the first part of the year we're in a, we're in a in the seventh uh, uh, year of the Shemitah cycle and then it, it changes in autumn in this case it would be somewhere around September, October of 2023, it would change over to the next year um, whichever is the next year, so in, in, in 2021 for example, it was in the fifth year of the Shemitah cycle for the first part of the year and then it changed over to the sixth year uh, in, the, in, in autumn so around about September of 2021 it changed over to the sixth year and then it goes on to, uh, and then that cycle continues in 2022 uh, for the sixth year until it changes over to the to the next uh, SMIC, the next number whatever number number follows in the Shemitah cycle so please it, this it's very important that you understand the the denotation or what i've tried to depict here in these numbers okay so we've got where we've got a part of a Shemitah cycle in 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 a year and it continues in the following year before the actual changeover that's that's fairly important to take note of because it has an implication further down the road when i start looking at where i believe the bible tells us we are in the cycle in the Shemitah cycle okay this column here, all I've done there is I've just numbered the the actual cycle. So typically, a meter cycle runs from it's 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 uh, seven times seven. That's forty nine years. The fiftieth year, the actual jubilee year, would be the first year of the next cycle. Okay, so th um, this, for example, here is year one of the new cycle. Yeah, but it is also labeled as a jubilee year. Okay, so then you would have. Uh, Se uh, seven groups of seven going all the way till you get 49 years and then the then it would change again to the next jubilee and so these cycles uh, go go on and we're able to to keep uh, to to then plot these cycles going going backwards in this case or forwards from from a particular point and uh, and that's what we've done in the past it's no different to what we've done in the past all and then what we've done here is I've just summarized so instead of dip showing every single year I'm just showing the the last year of each is uh, of each cycle and then the first year of the cycle so this well in reverse it would be the first year of this of the of the seven cycles and then I'm just showing this this first year of this of seven is is part of that seven okay because it's seven seven sevens that's one two three four five six seven and that would be your total um, jubilee cycle okay I'm just showing the reason why I'm showing the first year of of the the first seven 
uh, year cycle in addition is so that I can flag the, the Jubilee year. Okay, all the others are just flagged as the seventh year is flagged as a Sabbath year, uh, but the first year in the cycle is flagged as a Jubilee year, and I want to be able to flag or both so that we can see where they are and we can count them and etc. Et so, and then that re repeats itself over and over. And what's all I've done is I've, we've taken that cycle backwards, um, all the way back to the time of when Jesus was born. Okay, and you, we've Alan has used this or his version of it many times over in, in different videos. So we're fairly familiar with it. Okay. Now, in terms of the where Jesus was born, we know f with a great degree of certainty that Jesus was born in the year 2 BC. Okay. Now that's just a label. Okay. When the guys that put the Gregorian calendar together, they decided for some other reason not to have a year zero. Okay. So they labeled year zero as 1 BC, which we can depict as a minus 1, okay? So they didn't want to have a 0 BC, so they wanted to have a 1 BC and a 2 BC and a 3 BC. And we showed as minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. That's, it's just a label. Mathematically, the ISO, so if you had to go and do a mathematical calculator, that's why Stellarium, which uses uh, years in its calculation, it, they just left the year 0 in there because it just makes it simple. Otherwise, they would have had to uh, code out the zero and, and, and do a whole lot of jumping through loops to, to eliminate. So they just said, okay, we're just going to include a year zero instead of a, uh, instead of calling it uh, minus one, they call it zero. And therefore, minus two, they would call minus one. That's why we need to make that adjustment. We need to be aware of that when we use Stellarium, when we compare um, dates. Um, uh, you know, going across the BC, AC, AD, AD, um, um, BC line. So really just a label. You, if you want to call this minus one instead of minus two and call this zero instead of minus one, uh, it's just a label at the end of the day. It doesn't change the number of years effectively. So I'm, I'm sticking to conventional labeling. Most people understand where that where there's no year zero and there's a and it's two two BC and one one BC and then it changes over to one eighty. So I'm gonna stick to that. So we know that Jesus was born in this year. How do we know that? For a fact we know it because of the biblical biblical chronology that was put together by Reverend Martin Anstey about 110 years ago. And I've done a detailed video in fact, I've done several detailed videos on on this. Um, I'll just show you where you can buy it. It's 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 a fairly lengthy subject to to um, to get to to wrap your mind around. It's a fair amount of data that that one goes through, and so I explain the whole biblical chronology in greater detail in these four videos here. Okay, that if you it's well worth the time. It's it is such a beautiful thing to see that the Lord God has provided all the information that we needed to be able to determine from Adam all the way to Jesus Christ the exact dates on when things occurred. Okay, so we are therefore able to determine from this biblical chronology exactly which year Jesus was born in. And it was largely all because of the bridge of Daniel's prophecy of 70 weeks. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail on that now. Um, there is that's a that's a, a chrono chronological study that I believe every every Christian that's worth his salt should understand. That's why I put the videos together, but it's going to take some time to get through it. It's not it's not just a hamburger quickly slap it together and go. This is a this is the meat and potato stuff, and probably a couple of meals in it uh, for that matter. So there is a short version. Um, if you want to understand how we came to the to know for a fact based on the chronology where Jesus was born in the year two uh, BC, this one here would be a summary of all of that. Okay, the six thousand years biblical chronology. It explains exactly how we get to the two BC for Jesus' birth from the biblical chronology. So if you don't want to go through all of that, at least spend the time, the one and a half hours, getting an understanding of this, so that you can be certain. Uh, you, you, the whole thing is, each one of us needs to be get to the point where we 
are confident with what we're saying. We, this is not just guesswork. This is, this is factual information straight from the scriptures, taking the minute, minutest care to the detail that's provided in the scriptures. And, and that's what Martin Anstey did for us. And, uh, and, he, and in a nutshell, we were able to determine, in fact, the, the, the chronology takes us to when Jesus, when the Messiah arrived. Okay, and so we we know exactly where where the we know that the um, Daniel received his uh, 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 prophecy of the seventy weeks uh, uh, in about the, the in 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 fact in the sixty eighth year of uh, uh, of the seventy years of exile. That's when Daniel and 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 uh, many Israelites were exiled for seventy years in Babylon. And uh, and that was decreed. Uh, uh, that was already prophesied by Jeremiah, and 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 um, Alan's made reference to that uh, uh, Jeremiah twenty five, where he speaks of the seventy years that are that are um, that are, that were that were determined for for the Israelites to be in exile. Okay, and and that uh, they go into and this. They they there for the full seventy years, but in the seventieth year is when Cyrus uh, comes becomes sole king, and it's in his first year, for, based on the scriptures, um, and this is all detailed in the chronolo chronological study and in that uh, video that I referred to, that Cyrus in his first year as sole uh, uh, king decreed that Jerusalem should be rebuilt, and that was the trigger for the beginning of the seventy weeks. Of years now what we did then was we then able to take we know exactly when the 70th year was uh, occurred in the chronology and we can take the 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 we it was uh, 69 weeks to Messiah so 483 years to the arrival of Messiah so not his birth um, but him now beginning his ministry as Messiah when now the whole, well, the, the known world then, or the people then know, as per the eyewitness of John, that this is the Messiah. This is the Lamb of God. Um, and that happened when Jesus uh, turned 30. Okay. There's been some debate whether it in fact happened when he was 29, had just turned 29, and he was still heading towards 30. And that's something that we can have a look at, but it has an impact on this seven, uh, on the Shemitah cycle, because uh, and I'm going to get into that because that's the the, the part that w that's where I got a little bit thrown off in this whole thing. Okay, so we know. For, let me just go to the chronology a little bit so that you can actually see that. Um, okay, this is this is an Excel spreadsheet of Anstey's uh, biblical chronology, all the way from Adam to to the to when uh, to G to the time of Jesus Christ. Uh, birth uh, and crucifixion. Um, all I've done is I've brought in Anstey's tables into an electronic format into Excel so that I can I could work with it and I've and we've we've not manipulated the data but I've added a lot of information and we can work in it, it just makes it a lot easier. So just a very quick recap. Um, if we go to um, let's just go to Daniel's this was the year, yes, Daniel's 70 week. This was, okay, this was the year um, from a Bible date from, from Ad Adam, in other words, um, from Adam, it was 3588th year from Adam, okay. In terms of a Gregorian date, it was the equivalent to the year 455 BC, okay. Um, that was a and th something that I added. This this was straight out of Anstey's uh, table. This I've added so that because he he didn't use the Gregorian dates. He used he, he had for example uh, Ptolemy's uh, dates, which we know is there's an 82 year difference between them. And I, and that's all covered in detail in the chronology in the biblical chronology videos. 
Please go and have a look at that if you want to understand it. Then, of course, there's the Hebrew years, which I've just extrapolated backwards. We know what uh, they've got a different year count for some of the reasons. I don't know why their year count is different. I, 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 all I know is I know what the count is, and I've just uh, brought it back so that we can relate to it over here. Okay. So, nevertheless, in this year is um, was the 69th year. In fact, sorry, this year, 68, this is where... According to the biblical chronology, this is when Daniel received the vision of the 77s, okay, in the 68th year of their captivity, okay. And he was told that the, the decree to, he didn't, it wasn't told who would be the, uh, who would do the, but he said when the decree is made to rebuild Jerusalem and the city, that would be the trigger for the beginning of the uh, of the 70 weeks okay now at that point in time Darius the Mede was still governor under Cyrus and that was the case for those two years so the year in which he received it was the first year Darius the Mede uh, with, under Cyrus and then again for the second year and then in this year is when Cyrus became sole king it, it was in the year that Zerubbabel was in his first year and all of these things have been checked out from the biblical chronolo chronological data we can pinpoint this date we can pinpoint this date the 70 years now it was Cyrus that decreed the rebuilding I don't care what anybody says it was nothing to do with any of the others those were all subsequent to the one that was the the, the absolute decree that triggered the beginning of the 70 week count was Cyrus's decree in his first year so that means now we what we don't know is when in his year did he do it right at the beginning of his uh, of his year did he do it right at the end if he did it right at the end then maybe this one would move down to there if he did it right at the beginning then the first year for the for the 70 weeks would be simultaneous with the 70th year that's the way Anstey had it I believe it is correct okay in fact I haven't altered it and I and I wouldn't even consider altering it unless um, we get we discover that we got yet another <laughs> year. so at the moment uh, it has an impact on on things right down at the moment the first year of this of this uh, 490 years is is uh, coincides with the 70th year of the captivity okay now the thing that I never registered in my head, and this is the part I'm really embarrassed about, is when, because I really studied uh, uh, Daniel's prophecy in a, in, a, in a great degree of detail, but what had never occurred to me, that it wasn't just 77, uh, 70 uh, groups of seven, or 70 uh, weeks of seven years, okay? 70s, uh, uh, it was specifically 70 Smita cycles. It was not just any seven years. It was specifically Shemitah cycles, and it never occurred to me that, it, that we were actually dealing with a Shemitah cycle. This was the, the trigger to determine exactly where the, the Shemitah cycle is. So when we when we take that, and so in other words, the first year of of the the of the of these uh, four hundred ninety is the first year of of the first. Smita cycle and so if we take that forward now we, we we know that it was 483 years to Messiah uh, and that would be to the arrival of Messiah and we took 483 and there we, we saw that from there it brought us to 2980 2980 is when Messiah arrives okay and we know that um, Jesus was 30 when he arrived. He began to be 30 when he arrived. Now we can, we're going to that other debate where was he 29 and still heading to 30 because it's, it's, a, it's up to a year difference. <laughs> um, and that's pretty important. But for now, let's just, I'm going to get into this. So just, just hold tight. He could have been 29, but at this stage, I believe he was 30 in the 29th, in 2980. What never occurred to me before was if this was four hundred eighty third year. That's the seventh year of the Shemitah cycle. The next year would be year one of the final seven cycles. Year one of the Shemitah cycle. This is following a Shemitah cycle, and uh, and I'm actually embarrassed to say that it never occurred to me. 
Um, and in any case, I'm now going to switch over from this year 2029, okay, um, where this in, in my chart, which I now understand to be the seventh year, in my original chart, you will see it's flagged as the sixth, uh, the first year. Okay, so let's go back to to the so that I just wanted to get, get you into the chronology. So just just to show you very briefly how we know which uh, um, Jesus arrived in, and then of course once we know where where Jesus in the 29th year of uh, 29 AD, we can go, go backwards um, and we can determine uh, his birth date. And if it's 29, then he must have been born in 2 BC. Okay. Um, now, of course, if if we if he was 29 in, in that year, then then he would have been born a year later, uh, and he would have been born in 1 BC or year zero. Okay. And I have considered that as a possibility because maybe you know the original dating was correct and they weren't out uh, but the thing that is preventing me from shifting this in any way is the 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 stars the conjunction that we have uh, between Venus and uh, Jupiter that formed a super bright star and it occurs exactly on the 15th day of the third month on on, on the biblical calendar and that is like a second witness so I'm reluctant to adjust the birth year for the because of the sake of the second witness. Because if we move it one year on, it means that that sign didn't occur in at the point in time when Jesus was born. And I believe that God provided that for us as an additional witness. Okay. So at this point in time, I'm I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns that he was born in 2 BC, and then of course now we need to debate. Uh, whether Jesus in 29 was Jesus 29 or was he 30? Okay, now so <clears throat> let, let me put it to this way if Jesus was 29 in the year 29 AD, he would have had to be born a year later. So, because we're not prepared to move this because of the second witness. Jesus must have been must have turned 30 in 29 AD otherwise he wasn't born in 2 BC okay so that's if we if we accept that he was born in 2 BC he must have turned 30 in the year 29 AD all right so now we can take this thing forward You'll see now in 29, you'll see here, I've got year 1 lined up with 29, okay? This is year 1 of the the cycle. If this is year 1 of the Smita cycle, then the end, the final jubilee would be in, um, would be in 38, 39, which would mean that we are currently, right now, in the 7th year of the Shemitah cycles. Okay, seventh going over to the first year by the autumn of this year. Okay, that is how we had based on uh, now for, 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 for some time. And and now we're going to need to test is this correct or is this incorrect? And the question is, is there a scripture? that can give us the information and I believe there is there is a scripture that can tell us exactly where the Jubilee is um, Luke 4.15 okay. and the, it's important to note uh, uh, the, uh, the, the chapter that this occurs in there's a Jubilee marker in Luke 4 and it goes as follows you see uh, this is now after he was baptized, <coughs> and after he was baptized, he was he had his forty days tr uh, testing in the wilderness, where Satan tested him for forty days. Okay. After he re after that, he returned and he was busy teaching, and he taught in the synagogues, 
uh, being glorified by all and he came to Nazareth so this was all shortly after his 40 days okay and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up um, and in as in and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day okay so it was a Sabbath day and he stood up to read and there was de delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah or um, yeah and so and then he and he went and opened the book and he found the place where it was written and this is the following now this is Isaiah 61 okay uh, I've got it in another chart where I've got the actual Isaiah 61 we, we can have a look at that briefly but so this is what how he read it now okay he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives to and and the receiving of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the lord boom that is a jubilee statement this word preach means to 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 um uh, announce or to uh, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and there, there are many scholars that agree that Isaiah 61 is related to the events around a jubilee in fact it's the events around the final jubilee but what the Lord was doing here he was marking this, he was reading that Isaiah 61 and he was reading it to mark for us the jubilees and he, because he goes on to say and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and his eye, and the eyes of all of them were in the, so all of them in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now, one of them, there, was, there were several things that he said here okay and these things are fulfilled in their hearing including the proclamation of the acceptable year of the Lord including this was included here proclaimed the Jubilee okay the just the interesting thing is now when he proclaimed this when he did this was it at the end of the Jubilee year or was it at the beginning of the Jubilee year Okay, that is the issue if uh, let's just go into a little bit of detail now okay yeah we have in this 2829 okay in the year 2829 in uh, let's call it around about June in in the uh, June of 28 I believe the Lord turned 29 he turned 29 in in 28 so, so in around about June so it's a few months into the new into the year uh, the 15th of the third month he turned 29 okay just short a few months after that after he turned 29 um, it, it according to our understanding at, the, at, the, at this point in time it changed from this far the seventh year into the first year this is the first year it became uh, in the autumn of 28 so in autumn of 28 it, it became the first year of the, of the cycle so then here in 29 it's the first year of the cycle up until the autumn of 29 okay now if so this first bit here he's in the beginning of the year is is 29 and he turns 30 okay just bear with me and he turns 30 at on the in the third month of 29 okay so it means he turned 30 according to this current understanding he turned 30 in the jubilee year okay he turned 30 and then he went and got uh, uh, he was baptized and his ministry started just after he turned 30 and he went and had uh, just after his baptism he went to the to to uh, the wilderness for to for to be tested for 40 days and then after the 40 days he returned so i believe that all happened the baptism and the 40 days testing happened between his birthday in the third month and between the the, the change over of the cycle in the autumn which would have been in the seventh month so between the middle of the third month and the beginning part of the seventh month those the the baptism and the 40 days happened 
And he then, if this is correct, that means he declared the Jubilee right at the end of the cycle. If this was true first year of the cycle, he would have it would have been towards the end of the cycle that he pronounced or declared the Jubilee, made, that he read Isaiah 61. The problem that I have is that this fulfilled in your ears. Now, when you when you pronounce something, when you proclaim something, when you proclaim a Jubilee, do you do it right at the end? Or very close to the end it doesn't make a lot of sense it's possible but I do believe that it was more likely that's it's the, the possibility that he did it at the beginning is probably more likely okay anyway so that's where we had it okay now, then Alan Sirius said oh okay we might have another year to go so that would mean that this picture doesn't doesn't fit anymore we now need to change it to this picture okay sorry let me just go there okay so instead of the one being in line with the 29 now the one is in line with the 30 okay one is in line with the 30 okay can you now just switch back briefly so you can just see the change there one was in 29 30 and now we've moved it up forward. The one is in line with the 20, uh, 30, 31. Okay, that's the new, new, new measurement. Now let's go back and test if if Jesus was 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 turned 30, as I believe he did, in the year 29 AD. That means over here it was in the seventh, towards the end of the seventh cycle, or in the seventh cycle he turned 30 little bit later or just after after uh, he turned 30 after his birthday in the, in the third month he he is the atonement and was the beginning of the new cycle in this case now in this scenario it changes from the seventh to the first yeah just after he turned 30 okay just after he turned 30 being baptized and having his 40 days he would have read Isaiah he would have finished his 40 days just before or at the beginning of the new cycle okay very close maybe just after or just before not likely that it was on atonement day of atonement because he he read Isaiah 61 on a Sabbath day and the day of atonement is not on a Sabbath it's on the 10th day of the seventh month so it wasn't on the actual day so it was either the Sabbath before or maybe that was a Sabbath after I don't know um but somewhere very close, having turned 30, having had been baptized at 30, is now of ministry age uh, to, be, to be able to, in terms of the Israelites at 30, they entered into their ministry. They became priests at age 30, not before. Okay, so now he's a legitimate, of, of legitimate age to become a high priest. Okay, he then um, reads Isaiah, uh, 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 um, he reads Isaiah 61. So he reads, uh, this is Isaiah, as recorded in Luke 4, he reads Isaiah 61, okay, and he declares, um, so the reason why I can't see that is this, somehow this got a bit scrunched up, let me just enlarge this, okay, that's why I couldn't recognize it, uh, let's just bring that back a little bit, okay, so he reads Isaiah 61, okay, probably at around about the beginning of the cycle okay having just gone into the first year and he now proclaims in this process he proclaims the acceptable year of the Lord at the beginning of the cycle which makes much more sense so I believe that is exactly what he did here and, and by the way in Luke 4 in terms of Luke knowing all things in, in order ch uh, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4 this jubilee cycle is exactly in the right place where we know chapter 4 must be right at the end of the the 14 years chapter 4 is related to the end of the 14 years and this is exactly and then at the end of 14 is the jubilee so this is all fitting together with those with luke's chapters in order so there's no question in my mind that this is a jubilee statement and it was made at the beginning of the cycle 
So when I made this adjustment, uh, uh, just one last thing before I move on. If you don't, uh, there are many that agree that this is a Jubilee statement. There is there's one um, teaching that I found that I thought uh, I just thought was particularly good. Um, I think it was this one. I just want to play it out for the first uh, one and a half minutes. Okay, just bear with me. It's it's really a great teaching. You can go watch the full thing in your own time. Um, interesting time, seven seven one seven. Um, okay, so I'm going to play from the beginning, and this is their interpretation of the of Isaiah 61. Okay. The scroll of Isaiah is the first of three major prophets in the Bible. And in Isaiah chapter 61, the prophet offers a vision of a restored world where the land is full of abundance and full of right relationships between people. The final lines of the poem describe Israel as a new garden of Eden. For as the land brings out its sprouts, and as a garden makes sprout its seed plants, so the Lord Yahweh will make sprout righteousness and praise before all the nations. That sounds great. But Israel, at this time, has been conquered and ruled by other kingdoms. They've been reduced to a powerless nation full of grief and mourning. But among those mourning Israelites, there was a small group that never lost hope in God's promise. And so this poem is written to encourage that group of people. The poem is written in three main... Just a quick pause there. <laughs> listen to that group of people that, that if you if you listen to their interpretation and without understanding of the worker group etc um, you probably won't get it all in this watch but go back and watch it and you you just cons consider it uh, in terms of the whole chapter in terms of what we understand and you will see a whole lot of things come up into you in terms of what they're actually saying there and what we know sections which themselves all have three sections okay let's go through it it begins the spirit of the lord yahweh is upon me because yahweh has anointed me so the speaker calls himself the anointed from the hebrew word mashiach mashiach that's where we get the word messiah yeah exactly and this messiah says that through god's spirit he's going to bring seven acts of new creation the first is to bring good news to the oppressed and then to bind up the brokenhearted, and then to release captives and those who are bound up. Liberation. And then right at the center of these seven acts, the Messiah says that he will proclaim the year of Yahweh's favor. This is a reference to an ancient Israelite practice, the year of Jubilee. Oh right, the Jubilee. It's meant to happen every seven times seven years, where everything resets. Slaves and prisoners gain freedom, all debts are canceled, families receive back their ancestral land, yeah, this radical practice is a sign that points forward to the renewed creation, like the cosmic jubilee. So, why is the jubilee also called a day of vengeance? Well, if you set everything right, that involves reversing everything that's wrong. And for those who benefit from oppression or from unjust social arrangements, the cosmic jubilee might feel more like retribution than re So, these guys, just a quick, another quick insert there. Uh, you will see Jesus stopped at the proclamation of the acceptable year of the Lord. That's when he stopped reading and then he handed the book back. He didn't get onto the rest. Obviously, the rest wasn't related to that particular point in time. He was making a point about the Jubilee and he stopped reading. And then he said, Up to, what you've heard is now fulfilled. Okay. Obviously, the rest of it cannot, he couldn't have read the rest of it and said it's fulfilled. So he had to stop at that particular point in time. I'm going to play just a little bit on because it's, there is some interesting, in fact, just a, a little bit long so that you can get to, but you, you would have picked up that these guys have identified that that uh, being a Jubilee year statement. There are many other scholars that agree with that Isaiah 61 is a Jubilee, uh, is related to a Jubilee um, year. Okay. The other interesting thing is yeah, that um, you will notice that in the original text, there was, um, let me just go back to, in this text, and I put it in blue, that when Jesus, in the, in the part, as it's recorded in Luke, it's verbatim, except for this one part here, and recovering of sight to the blind is not in the original text. Well, not in our current original text. Uh, whether it was in the original text um, that Jesus read, I don't know, or whether this was inserted into the gospel 
for a specific reason for us to take. In other words, one of those prophetic injections into the thing so that we can... The recovering of sight of the blind was added or inserted. Um, that's something we need to take note of as well in the, in the whole equation, I do believe. And maybe our blindness is being opened up right now in terms of this understanding. Okay. Um, yeah, just a little... In, in fact, I think I've covered what I... You, you go watch that video um, and watch the whole thing. It's really a great, a great teaching on Isaiah 61. Okay. So I've made my point. Somebody else agrees with me that this is a Jubilee statement. Okay. Jubilee statement made when he was 30. And, it's, and we're now able to peg the Jubilee year. Now, for the first time, we can move the cycle forwards and backwards from a point in time that the Bible tells us where it is. We came to this year, 29 AD, from Daniel's 70 weeks. Okay? we told that when Jesus turns 30, at, and, and this is when he is 30, and at the year 29, and he makes a jubilee statement, we are able to pinpoint exactly where the jubilee year started. In the year 29, it started. Of course, the major part of that cycle is in the following year, uh, 30 AD. Okay, so I am fairly certain that, in fact, from this point on, I don't care what anybody says. I know from a biblical perspective, based on the biblical chronology, I know where the Jubilee year is and where we are in the cycle. Because now, when we take this forward, using the same method that I used, but this time going forward by the cycles from, from a known point, in, not, not just guessing and by a process of elimination, we now know that the next, the, the final Jubilee must be in the year 2039, which means that where we're at at the moment, uh, 23, let me just move this out of the way, uh, 2324, we must be in the sixth year, going into the seventh year, by autumn of this year, we'll go into the seventh which means that next year is main, uh, partly the 7th and then changed to the 1st year by autumn of 2024. So scripturally, for the first time, scripturally, we can prove this is where the cycle is. Okay, no guessing, that's it. No other debates on this matter, that is where it is. Okay, um, g there is a but <laughs> getting into this thing. Okay, and I'll come back to the but, but before I, I, I go there, what I now did, having determined exactly where where our uh, jubilee is, okay, where the jubilee cycle is. Let me just go back to the beginning there again. Going the opposite direction now. So we've gone forwards to our time, and now we can go backwards, and we can test whether this is true or not. And it's something that I should have done a long time ago, and I didn't do it. I was meaning to do it, and I just never got around to it. And uh, anyway, now I've done it. I've taken this backwards in the um, in the chronology, and that's what I want to go back and have a look at. And I want to point out to you some of the interesting synchronizations that happen now that we've got the thing uh, uh, in, in sync. So the first thing that happened was uh, in, in the in the um, let me just get that into sight. Here is my jubilee count. Okay, that I've now superimposed. So originally, when I did it before the adjustment of one year, this year, yeah, which I know is the four hundred eighty third year in the year twenty nine. Okay, I know that was ended up being year one in the cycle, but year one. Of the cycle did not synchronize with the 483 which 483 is the seventh year of the sixth cycle remember there's seven uh, uh sorry of 69th cycle so there's for 70 cycles this is 69 end of the 69th is comes the messiah and in the last in the middle of the last one is when he was crucified and he and he made a covenant with many okay um I don't have the time to get into Daniel's prophecy um, and the true understanding of Daniel's prophecy. There is a study. I will. Uh, um, I don't have it open now to be able to show. Or maybe, maybe I can just go there very quickly. Uh, okay, I'll just unpause the video now. So 
I've done a detailed study on Daniel's 70 weeks in terms of the wars there is and there is to come. If you to understand Daniel's prophecy in these contexts, you need to come and have a look at the study. It is, again, it's, 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 not, a, it's not a five minute exercise, it's a lengthy study. It's for those that really want to get into it. If you haven't already done it, I would highly recommend that you get into it because it explains exactly the 483 years versus the 490 and how it all fits together. And then it goes into the, the understanding of the prophecy in today's terms, okay, um, the 70 years. So. I, I, I'm not going to go into detail. I will provide the link to this um, to this study in, in in the description box below this video. Please, if you haven't already done so, have a look at it. You'll be you'll be blessed. Okay, I've just reset myself back to where I was. Okay, so yeah, so that explains the 483, and we know, but now now that we know that this 483rd is the final year of the 69th uh, uh, cycle um, so that must be the end um, it, it cannot be a, a, a year one and that's where it was so after I moved everything f uh, moved it up obviously in this in this is it's now down but in my previous chart it's moved up so after I moved forward by one year we now have year one in line with 484 which is the beginning of the next cycle it is year one so the this jubilee count is now in sync with the Shemitah cycles the 70 Shemitah cycles of daniel's uh, prophecy okay so that's the first thing and uh, that that uh, is of interest to note now when we go back and i'm just going to go and show you i've taken this 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 um jubilee count backwards and I just want to go and show you a couple of very interesting things. Um, okay, at the beginning, there uh, we go. Okay, now the, coming here, remember this was um, the first year of the 490 uh, count, of which it's 483 to Messiah. In my previous sync, this year would have been year, se uh, year 7. No, uh, yeah, it would have been year. So I've moved everything. No, sorry, it would have been year nine, and that which is equivalent to the second year in in, in a seven-year cycle. So year nine of the forty-nine count would be equivalent to the second year of this of the second seven-year uh, seven-year cycle. So that was also not in sync with year one of the of the Shemitah cycles. So when we made an adjustment, then this one also came in sync. So we know uh, f f second another we know the, the, there's another synchronization issue resolved. Okay, year eight is the first year of the second cycle. So we've got seven years, and then uh, I've carried on number eight, but effectively it's the first year of the next cycle. Okay, number nine is the second year of the next cycle. Okay, so that synced up. And then I, when I went back and I continued, I think there's some interesting. I just want to highlight some um, some other interesting. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to just enlarge this a bit so that you can see it on your screen. Okay, here's the jubilee count, and we're going to go backwards here and just see if we can. Ah, here's another one. Okay, 21. The 21st year in the 49 year is a seventh year of the third cycle, and look what happened in the seventh year. It was the last year of the kings of Israel. The kings of Israel came to an end in the seventh year. In the Sabbath year of the third cycle. In the seventh year. Okay. Uh, I forgot to mention there's uh, the end of the kings for Judah. We we'll just go back and have a look. Uh, it's not on this. Uh, let's just see. It's on this. This chart. Here. Yeah. Uh, that's. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, so this was the end of the kings of Judah, um, and this was where the the temple. The sec this was when the temple was burnt. The temple was in this year. The temple was destroyed. The city was broken up, and the temple was broken down. Um, that would have been the the first temple, right? Um, and 
that happened in the Sabbath year. And yeah, so I just wanted to come back to to. And there was one other thing that I forgot to also the end of the record. Um, we I think it was ah yeah. Um, this was where the biblical record stopped when Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem in the last year of, of the record as at this red line ends in the Sabbath year uh, so see, these are just some interesting um, uh, synchronizations that are, are now synchronizing with the with the, with the with the Jubilee cycle that we've got um, um, let's go find another interesting synchronization. I don't know if there's any more on this this page. Okay, these are just tabs going. You know, each so uh, you know it, 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 it moves on from three one four three. The next one is three one four two. So you know, it's just going. I've just broken up the the t the tables the table into tabs. So it makes it easier. Okay, so three one four two carrying on backwards. And the next synchronization is um, this was interesting the 22nd year is the first year of the fourth cycle and the temple was finished in the first year Solomon's temple the first temple was finished in a at the beginning of a new cycle he finished it um, and then we go back and we see David David's year one was in sync with a sabbath cycle in the in the seventh year of the third cycle i'm not this is not this is just some interesting correlations uh, king david was born in the seventh year of uh, the seventh cycle okay seventh year in the sabbath uh, sabbath year he was born in that year um and, and this uh, you're going to be you're going to be floored when you see this next one um i think that i think that's the last on this and this, but oh, there is another one. Ah, this is the one that's going to floor you. This is the year that they entered into the promised land. Moses died, and Joshua led them into the promised land in year one of a jubilee cycle. And I, when that came in sync, I said, "Okay, that's it. I, I'm convinced." There is no way, this is not coincidental, this is exactly the cycle. We finally, beyond a, any reasonable doubt as far as I'm concerned, well at least, let's say, based on the balance of probabilities, we understand, we've got the cycle, we know what it is, we've had it all along, I just didn't see it, now we've got it. And so, the very first year when they entered into the promised land was the beginning of a jubilee cycle now i'm going to make a statement i believe I, what i did do sorry I, what i did do and i've graded out okay i took the cycle the jubilee cycle backwards further and I, I, everything before the the entry into the promised land there's virtually then there's nothing that really synchronizes nothing of, of and and um I, I realized, but wait a, wait a minute, when did the Jubilee cycle start? Did the Jubilee cycle start right at the beginning? Or did the Jubilee cycle start here when they entered into the land for the first time? And I believe that is the case. Because that, this Jubilee cycle is linked to when they come into the land. And I just want to go and read, I think I've got it on this chart here. Um, I think I've got it at the top here. Uh, we have got it yeah so in Leviticus 25 verses 1 to 7 and the Lord spake unto Moses in the Mount Sinai saying speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them when you come into the land which I give you ye, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto unto the Lord six years thou shalt sow thy field and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard and gather in the fruit thereof we, and this was all linked to when you come into the land. The jubilee is linked to when they come into the into the land, and there was no jubilees before they came into the land. 
the Jubilee cycle started when they came to them because it was linked to this thing. I believe that's the case. I'm not saying that there weren't seven year cycles. There probably were seven year cycles before. But the introduction of the Jubilee cycle, the resting of the land, because the Jubilee is about the resting of the land. And I believe that, that the, these cycles started when they came into the land. And that's probably why I cannot find proper connections between the, the seven year and the Jubilee cycles before they come into the land. That's, I believe, is the reason why there's no connections. In fact, this brings into question the whole book of Jubilee, Jubilees, which describes Jubilees from Adam. And, I know, and, and, I, and I've already shown previously, just very, very briefly, I've, I've shown, I, I, I checked, um, I've done a whole study where I brought in the book of Jubilees and compared it to, to the chronology, the biblical chronology, and they, 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 they hardly sync up. They, they, there's evidence of, of clear tampering to, to manipulate so that the, that the, 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 so that the uh, entry into the promised land ends on, on exactly the, the 50th Jubilee. And that was, uh, to me, uh, a manipulation of the, of, of the whole thing. When I, I did cover that in the, um, in, in the video that I did on the biblical chronology. I'm fairly convinced that the book of Jubilees is is a fairly tempered I, I think it was rewritten from another text um, and somebody inserted the jubilee descriptions in my personal opinion but uh, because I, I'm, I'm now of the view that jubilees never existed before they entered into the promised land okay that was just an in, in, in injection so we've seen some very interesting um, synchronizations um, throughout the biblical chronology i mean this is going back to uh, to you know t uh, the year 2500 I mean uh, this is um, 1500 years ago uh, well 2500 years ago um, so yeah, sorry it's actually 3500 years ago where we've got synchronizations between the uh, the jubilee count um, and the, the first one being perfectly the very year that they came into the land so um I, th um, I think that pretty much wraps up. Um, I, I, I'm not. I don't want to belabor the point um, too much, but I think that um, this is now correct. We know exactly where the cycle is. But what? So the implications are, of course, that uh, we have not yet reached the end of the seventh. We in, fa in fact are still sitting in the sixth year. And we're only going into the seventh year at the at the fall of this year, which brings me to a question that I am, uh, and I don't have the answer, but I'm just going to put it out there. I'm just going to put it as something for you guys to think about. The Lord's rules with regard to the harvest cycle are that six years. You sow and reap. And there is no sowing and reaping in the seventh year. So if the salvation of man is a type and shadow or modeled, as we know it, modeled on the, on, on the um, harvest cycle. Okay? It's mo modeled on the harvest. I mean, we, we know that the type and shadows of the harvest and the harvesting of souls is a clear type of shadow. I ask the question, why? Why would the Lord sow and reap in the seventh year when he doesn't allow sowing and reaping in the seventh year from an agricultural point of view? The type and shadow of the agricultural harvest from that perspective is not fitting our current thinking in terms of the seventh year. Why would he reap? I mean, there must be so. If you're going to reap in the, 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 there must be sowing of spiritual, I'm, I'm speaking spiritual sowing into people's souls and spiritual reaping of the harvest. Why would it not match the, the rest of the model? Is it possible? And, 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 and I've looked at it and it introduces a couple of complications because if we, if the Lord must finish his harvest, by the before the end of the sixth year, as is the case for agriculture, so that he doesn't sow and reap in the seventh year, that means we may still be in play for 
the harvest of the bride this year in the sixth year before the sabbath year just something to think about and then the implications are what happens then in the seventh year if that's a seventh year of Sabbath unto the Lord, remember he said, yeah, he says, but in the seventh year ye shall be, a, there will be a Sabbath year of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. A seventh, uh, so uh, read that again, but in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, comma, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard there's no sowing there's no pruning there's no nothing no though you know which is all spiritual aspects of, of 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 the preparing of the bride none of that is supposed to happen in the sabbath year i'm t i'm telling you there's something wrong here and i, I don't know it, it the, the the story of jacob and he worked seven years for his bride and then another seven and then six uh, that obviously comes back to mind but uh, there's something happening here. The other thing that comes to mind is, is there a possibility of, of Ezekiel, uh, um, Ezekiel chapter 4, where, the, where, um, where he, uh, he has to make a model of Jerusalem and it's besieged in spite of their iron dome. He's told to put an iron dome uh, uh, between himself and Jerusalem and in spite of the iron dome between himself and Jer Jerusalem, um, Jerusalem is besieged. And then shortly after that, there's the whole story of where he has to lie on his side for 390 days and lie on his side for 40 days. Uh, 390 for Israel and, and 40 days for Judah. I still haven't got to the bottom of um, um, what is the end time understanding of that. And is that in fact linked to the 40 days of the Son of Man and then a, an, an another period of 390 days where the Son of Man is tied up. He's not harvesting any longer. He's not harvesting for those. He's tied up. Is there a possibility that the 40 days, the, when the 40 days starts, it's, it's linked to the 40 days where Ezekiel was tied up and then follows on another 390 days or maybe it's 390 days simultaneous with the 40 days. I don't know. That makes it a, an, an additional 350 days, which is about a year, a short year. And that's it would be about right. Uh, 354 is a short year, so 350 days would be another year. And is there a possibility that we've got a 40 day uh, stroke uh, uh, three and, and 350 days totaling 390 days because they must even though Ezekiel was in sequential <coughs> he was tied sequentially on the one side and the other but he was one person so he couldn't do it simultaneously I don't know or maybe these these years are in fact sequential and maybe there is in fact the Lord takes a Sabbath with his bride for a year which would also fit the understanding that when a man is, gets married for a year, he doesn't go to battle. Okay. He's given a, a year off to be spent with his bride. So I, I'm not saying that is the case, and this may even introduce a whole lot of issues, um, but it's something to consider. And the reason why I believe we might still be in play okay, for this year is because I believe, according to the true calendar, we still haven't reached the ninth of the fifth month. Because um, I believe that we are sitting currently... Uh, let me just change this. Um, this is the Aries calendar. Okay. SMS Aries, where the year starts when the sun is in Aries and speaker is on the eastern horizon. Speaker is, is the uh, Latin word. For grain head, the Greek word was um, uh, stachys, s t a c h y s, stachys, which means grain head, and the Hebrew name for grain head is Abib. Now, Genesis four, uh, 14, and those of you who listen to my videos and know me, I'm stickler on the Genesis 14 tells us that this calendar is and the sun, the times, and the years, and the days, and everything is based on the sun, the moon, and the stars. And I've shown, without any, with, beyond any doubt, that the Hebrew calendar is based on the sun and the moon only, because they use the the equinox, and the equinox is sun-based. And then, of course, there's the Enoch calendar and the Zendok, whatever you they want to call it. They're all sun-based. But there's only one calendar that's based on the sun, moon, and stars, and the star being speaker, or using the sun in Aries, so to say, 
and that is the SMS calendar where the year must begin when the sun is in Aries and that means if that is the case we still have not reached the ninth of of the fifth month new year uh, of wine uh, or, or sorry uh, f uh, feast of weeks new wine and probably the correct Pentecost which comes up on the 25th of August according to this calendar and the interesting thing in here is that and I, this is I'm just going to close on this is that you you will recall in uh, um, in Alan's last video for those that are on ministry revealed and watch his last video where I shared the concept the idea that the feast of ingathering which we still don't understand exactly where it is but it is feast of ingathering at the turn of the year and uh, and I did a study on that it's this one year um, bringing in the harvest and the, where the feast of ingathering is at the turn of the year and then possibly looking at uh, what is this okay I've got an internet let me just refresh that thing uh, okay so um, uh, we in, in this study where the um, that I did and Alan shared on it where I, we say as in the days of Noah uh, according to Jesus he said as in the days of Noah now he was he was saying things will uh, you know people will be eating drinking marrying being given married in other words everything will be carrying on as normal um, well pretty normal if you can call the current situation in this world normal but anyway people will be getting on with their lives but is there an additional meaning that he means we must go and have a look at uh, the days of Noah and understand a little bit from there as well and there's this feast of ingathering which we know is at the turn of the year which would probably be related to when the sun turns from its most northerly position starts heading back south again so it's the you know in other words the midsummer point from a northern hemisphere perspective and that would be normally and currently it's the 21 of june but in the, in the days of noah it wasn't on the wasn't on the 21st of june it in in, in today's calendar terms it was at a, it was two months later in other words it was in august so um, and we know that because we can go and that's what the study was all about to go and have a look at where was the sun in the most uh, northerly position where was it where was the sun in relation to the stars which are static which are fixed okay so the, the sun moves in relation to this picture and we, we saw that on this date that is uh, the date is not important the important thing is well this is now obviously in Noah's day uh, in at the time of the flood more or less uh, it doesn't really change much for a couple of hundred years so I'm not going to get into a big debate whether the flood was exactly that year or not I believe it was exactly that year but it doesn't really matter uh, this way or that way for a few hundred years the point is the sun at its most northerly position at the turning of the sun would have been at the point of turning would have been when the sun was in line with Regulus exactly okay so to understand in today's terms where this when uh, you know to relate that picture to, to, to today's terms um, is what we've done over here is we just put the Sun exactly at Regulus uh, which would have been the original point in which the Sun turned uh, and I believe possibly the in gathering and it comes up with a, a date of 24 August 2023 and that's just interesting which uh, just um, going back to, to to the current Sun Moon and Stars calendar um, we can see that 24 August is is right there um, at the at the Feast of New Wine and probably Pentecost so just the two reasons why we might be in play one we haven't reached the ninth of the fifth month. we know we understand that this is the right on target this is the 50 days before the um, Feast of Trumpets uh, because if you count there's seven weeks before there's these Feast of Trumpets okay and in terms of the original story where they were attacked but not lost completely out of it at the ninth of the fifth month and then a few months after Gedalia was killed uh, on the first of the seventh month okay and then they lost the land completely they were then that was it they were done and uh, we we believe that there might be another there was a type and shadow of the end times events so if I'm correct that we have not yet reached the ninth month uh, uh, the ninth of the fifth month and the feast of in gathering in as per Noah's days is coinciding with uh, that same time period uh, and considering this issue that I've just raised that why is it that the Lord would harvest that he would seed 
uh, sow seed and and uh, and prune and and do all of the preparation in the seventh month when he doesn't allow it uh, would he break his own rules um, okay it's spiritually it's not the land but I there's a, there's a type of shadow issue here that I'm just raising so if this time goes by if August goes by and we get into September then I think I'll concede that um, maybe my this particular understanding is is wrong and we have to wait at least until next year this time uh, to to get to the end of the seventh year but in terms of where we are in the Shemitah cycle I'm not even going to enter into debate anymore it's all there scripture proves it it's laid out in black and white I can take this information this evidence to, to a court and they'd have to find that I'm correct there's no doubt about it I think uh, yeah that pretty much uh, wraps it up um, so just uh, I don't want to spend I don't even know how much time I spent on this I didn't want to make it too long and too complicated I hope I think I've covered everything um, yeah so thanks for listening and I uh, hope to see you guys soon in heaven if we might just have just a few days left if I'm correct God bless you. Thanks very much. Goodbye.